sponsored by Intel. We are now in the third and final stage of Intel's 2018 Extreme Rig Challenge. I'm Jeremy from CyberPower PC, and I'll be the one talking to you about the products that's inside our rig. But before we begin this video, we'd like to give a special thanks to our partners over at Intel for providing the processor, motherboard, and SSD that has or will be featured in the videos for this competition. In this video, we will discuss the final components of the build, which is the SSD, RAM, and also show the complete build from start to finish. The first component of the video is the Intel's Optane SSD 900P. This SSD is one of the fastest on the market, utilizing 3D crosspoint memory media for extremely low latency and also using the NVMe interface to give you maximum read and write speeds for gaming and content creation needs. Experience seamless transitions and fast load times with this SSD. When installing this SSD into a PCIe lane, you want to make sure it's properly aligned with its corresponding expansion slot so you can screw it in properly and avoid any damage to the motherboard or SSD. And for the final component, we have 64 gigs of G-Skills Trident Z RGB RAM. G-Skills Trident Z is known for its RGB capabilities, but not only is it aesthetically pleasing, it also packs a punch, built with a custom 10-layer PCB offering maximum signal stability and reliability for overclocking. On top of that, it can also utilize ASUS Aura Sync, which works perfectly with our build so we can sync the RAM, bands, and motherboard all together. Now, here's some of the build process and the finished product. When mounting a motherboard on a case that you can't lay down, you want to make sure you screw in an X-like pattern, so when you let go of the motherboard, it doesn't put too much stress on any corner of the board and damage it in any way. Plugging in all of the cables is always the most difficult part of the build process, especially when it comes to making it look perfect, so always plan ahead. Make sure you have the cables you need fed through the case, so you can easily plug them into the motherboard. Also, when plugging in the front I.O. for the case, make sure to read either the manual for the motherboard or just look directly on the board. There is some text on the board usually labeled JFP1 that will tell you where each cable needs to go. When mounting the fans onto the radiator, make sure you have the fans blowing through the radiator to keep it nice and cool. To know which side of the fan intakes or exhausts, you look on either side of the fan and whichever side of the fan has the cable, that will be the side that exhausts the air. When setting up a liquid-cooled system, there are a few ways you can go about it, but in this video, I'll explain a little bit of our thought process and some tips. First, we must decide whether we want clear acrylic tubing or metal tubing. As you can see, we want the chrome-plated bronze tubing. Not only does it give the build a refined finish, but it will also help keep the liquid nice and cool. Once you decide what type of tubing you want, you then need to figure out whether you want to bend the tubing or use fittings. Since we went with the metal type of tubing, we decided to use fittings to give it a rugged look. After you got that locked down, you then start the planning phase of where you want all the tubing. My suggestion would first be put in the components that can't move, like the graphics card, motherboard, and radiator, then plan around that. Next is to cut the piping. We don't exactly have a video of me cutting the piping, but you can see the cut pipes in the second video. After it's all cut and measured, you start piecing it together. Another suggestion of mine would be to label the ends so that way you won't have a hard time figuring out which pipe goes where. Double check all the fittings and piping to make sure everything is secure before putting the liquid in because you don't want leaks.
Once we filled the reservoir up, we can then start up the computer. Make sure you let the system sit for a bit so it can fully cycle the liquid through the components and piping. When you first start the system, the pipes, reservoir, and water blocks are empty, so it'll take some time for the liquid to pass through each component and it will start to drain the reservoir. Wait 20 to 30 minutes for the liquid cooling loop to fully cycle. Once it's fully cycled, you can then check the reservoir and see how empty it is. And then fill it up, but leave a little space between the top of the reservoir and the liquid. Now, here's a first look at our finished extreme rig. Enjoy. That's it for the videos for the 2018 Intel Extreme Rig Challenge. And thank you for all of your support throughout the competition. Be sure to follow us on social media for more updates on our products and other information. Cast your vote by tweeting at CyberPowerPC with the hashtag Intel Rig Challenge. With your vote, not only will it help us win, but it will also automatically enter you into two drawings. First drawing is for the main prize, which will be our rig or one of our fellow system builders. And the second drawing will be for other prizes that Intel's giving away. The last day to vote is June 8th, so be sure to vote every day. More votes equals more chances to win. We will also have additional information in the description below for our products, link to the challenge page, and a link to the other videos we did for the challenge. There will be a live award ceremony hosted on Twitch, so be sure to join us on Tuesday, June 19th. Stay tuned for more details to be announced on the challenge page at rigchallenge.intel.com. Once again, thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed this video, and good luck.